Welcome to the tutorial on using the tools found in Google Drive. Begin your Gmail account and click on the grid in the upper right hand corner. This is the Google Launcher. It is the path to all Google shortcuts including your Google Drive, Calendar, Google Classrooms, among many other tools. Once you are in your drive, select the red New button. This opens a menu which allows you the ability to create a folder, to organize your documents, upload a file, upload a folder, create a Google document, create a Google Sheet, or create a Google Slide or presentation. Simply select the action you wish to take to create either a folder, Google document, Google Sheet, or Google Slide. Google Documents, Sheets, and Slides are productivity apps that let you create different kinds of online documents, work on them in real time with other people, and store them in your Google Drive online. You can access the documents, spreadsheets, and presentations you create from any computer anywhere in the world with an internet connection. Google Docs is an online word processor that lets you create and format text documents and collaborate with other people in real time. Google Sheets is an online spreadsheet app that lets you create and format spreadsheets and simultaneously work with other people. With Google Sheets you can create charts with your data. Google Slides is an online presentations app that allows you to show off your work in a visual way by creating and editing presentations, inserting images and videos and publishing your presentation to a website. When you create a new document, spreadsheet, or presentation, it will be named Untitled by default. To rename the file, simply click on the Untitled Document field, which opens a box to rename the document. Select OK when you have renamed your document, spreadsheet, or presentation. All documents, spreadsheets, slides, are saved automatically in your drive. To utilize Google Docs um, for data collecting you can create a table. Select table at the top menu options, insert table, and drag your cursor over the grid and choose the dimensions of the table you'd like to add. You can insert a table as large as 20 by 20 cells. Using a table is a versatile way to track grades and student data in a group or as an individual. For example, here is a table used to track students' math grades for a small group. You can insert rows to add additional students or insert columns to add additional math grades. Using Google Spreadsheets is another great tool for keeping track of student data. For example, these are the results of a quiz. Here we have the questions up top and the students responses down below. One of my favorite tools that Google offers is the Google Form. To create a Google Form, select the red New button. At the bottom of that drop-down menu you will see the word More. Hover over this and it will open another drop-down menu. Select Google Forms at the top of the list. It will automatically open an untitled form for you. If this is the first time using Google Forms, there will be a beginning tutorial to walk you through several of the features in this application. Once you've created a form, you can select a theme or a template depending on your purpose. Google Forms can be used to collect data through surveys and quizzes. All of the data is organized in a Google Sheet. Title your form. and then you're ready to start adding the questions you'd like to ask. To add a question to your form, click the, you can start, it already has one ready for you to go. When you're ready to add another one, click on the drop down menu next to the add item. There are several different types of questions that you can create. Text, where respondents are able to provide short answers. Paragraph text, respondents provide longer answers. Multiple choice, respondents select one option from among several. Check boxes, respondents select as many options as they'd like. Choose from a list, 
Respondents select one option from a drop-down menu. Scale. Respondents rank something along a scale of numbers, such as from 1 to 5. You can have a grid. They can also be a date stamp and a time stamp is one of the questions. Clicking the Add button and not the arrow will initially give you the default question type, which is text. Once you've added a question, you can change its type by selecting from the question type menu. When you've selected your question type, you can then fill in the possible responses to your question. If you want to further explain your question, you can add a description to the help text field. If you want to prevent respondents from leaving a question blank, check the required question box which makes sure users answer a question before submitting your form. To edit an existing item, just click the edit button. To duplicate an item, click the duplicate button. To delete an item, click the delete button. Here is an example of a quiz form that I created. Here we have the questions. You can type in a description, and here are the answer choices. When you're done with the question, select Done. So I can ha you can have different types of questions. Multiple choice, short answer, longer answers. You can create a new spreadsheet for your form's responses. Click on View Responses an example of the spreadsheet that is created from the Google Form. The types of questions are here at the top and the students responses are below. There's a date and timestamp as well as the username of the student who answered the questions off to the side. When you're ready to look at your live form, view live form, View Live Form in order to review your final product before sharing it with others. When you've completed your form, you can share it through email or social media. Just click the blue Send Form button at the top right corner of your browser window. You can share a link to your form, or you can add names, email addresses, and groups to the Add People field. Click the Done or Send button and the people you've added will receive an email directing them to your form. There are some uses for Google Forms. You can graph the results of a survey, create whole school or department surveys, create student quizzes and assessments, gather student data from multiple parties, get feedback from parents, use it to, for discipline referrals, to create student digital data portfolios, and to gather information from teachers and team members. I hope you have learned a lot today from this tutorial and are now ready to explore these apps on your own and discover all of their uses in the classroom for data collecting and sharing.